Hello, I'm Lou Alan Falco, the creator of Approval Tests. We've all heard the story of the fox who found a bunch of grapes, but ended up not being able to reach them because they were too tall. After trying and trying, he finally walked away, declaring, those grapes were probably sour anyways. I found a very similar thing in the testing world in terms of testing the view. That because they've been so hard to test, a lot of people just simply declare, views aren't worth testing anyways. It's a different story in approval tests, much easier, much more capable. I'm going to show you four ways to test views today, including common mistakes, better practices, and then finally, the best practice, which I use myself when testing views. Hopefully after all of that, testing views will be within your reach, and you can decide for yourself how good they taste. So what I'm going to test today is the tic-tac-toe application. And the first thing I'm going to test is just that it renders. So let's take a look at what this is like. First, I need to create my test method, and we're going to test startup. The do is really quite simple here. All I need to do is create the form, new tic-tac-toe form. And now we need to do the verify. This is going to be a win form approvals dot verify of the form. Well, now that that's done, let's give it a run. And we can see here, we have our empty tic-tac-toe form and it's never been approved. So unfortunately, Tortoise doesn't allow me to just move that over. So as you can see in my test, I'm also using a clipboard reporter, which will give me the command line syntax to approve this. Now that they're passing, I'm just gonna clean up the English here. And I think you can see Testing forms is a fairly simple thing to do in approval tests. However, we always want to test more than just the startup of this form. So let's go a little bit further and take a look at what this is like when we start testing a little bit of manipulation on our forms. So test scenario. I'm going to run this just like we did before so that I can easily talk about what I want. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is approve it prematurely. And then I'm gonna to go to the file for my scenario, and I'm gonna edit that. So the scenario that I wanna test here is pretty simple. I wanna put an X over here, an O in here, and then finally an X down here. I'm just going to save that. And now we have the idea of what we want the final result to look like. I'll give that test one more run so we can see it together. Here's what I currently have. I want it to end up in this scenario. Great. So how do I do that? Well, obviously, I push the buttons. And this is the first mistake that I see people. The idea is good, right? You have this view, you want to press, click, type, select something, and you're going to end up with a new view. If I was to write this in Cucumberese, I'd say, given a view, when I do some stuff, verify the resulting view. And this makes sense, because this is how I would test it as a human. If I gave this to a QA person, this is what they would do. They'd bring up the window, they'd click some buttons, and then they'd look at the result. And that's great if you're a user because GUIs are good ways for users to interact with our programs. But you're not a user, you're a programmer. And GUIs are not good ways for programmers to interact with other programs. So, let's go back to our code and fix this issue. Instead of going into the form and trying to hit the button, I'm gonna look at the button that I want to hit. And it's gonna call this play. I can't call this method right now because it's not available to me. But I'm a programmer. I can make the computer do what I want. And so I'm going to simply turn this public and now I can talk to it. So inside of here, I'm going to say form.play takes an X and a Y. So the first one is 0, 0. The next one is 1, 1. And the final one is to, let's see if I got that right. I did not. 
So the X's go this way and the Y's go down, but at least I can start to see what's going on. Let's go and fix that so it is right. That bit should be zero, two. Good, now this is what I want. I'm gonna go to my command prompt and paste the approval text and everything should be working. And this is a lot better way to do it rather than go in through the front end. That's a common mistake a lot of people make because they think I'm testing what comes out through the front door, I need to go in through the front door to create it. But you're still actually going in through the front door. If we were to look at what's going on here, we're still doing this view, we're no longer clicking the button, but all of these interactions are still occurring. And this is really making much more of an integration test than a unit test. And the downside of that is it's much harder to create these tests, they're longer to run, and a lot of times you have to deal with the dependencies sitting underneath. So what we're gonna do is really remove a whole bunch of this, in fact, almost all of it. And we're just gonna go down to the most simple part, get the model and render it. Again, if we're gonna look at this in Cucumber Ease, given a model A, when rendered against a view B, verify the result. It's very simple, very plain, Visually, you can just think of it, model plus view equals a result. Let's go back to the code and see how that looks. So here I'm manipulating my form. But what I really want to do is create a board. So what I'm going to do here is say, here's my form. I need my model, which is going to be a new board. And then finally, I'm going to say, form plus model. In this case, set the model. Now this works except for I haven't actually created my model yet. So in the model, I'm going to place an X at zero, zero. I'm gonna place an O at one, one. And then finally, I'm gonna place an X at zero, two. If everything works right, this should now pass. And you can see that it does. The nice thing about doing this, even though it looks very similar, is I am no longer going through the GUI manipulations at all. If there are transitions, I'm avoiding them. If there are lookups against the database, I'm avoiding them. All stuff that should be tested, but not tested in an integration form, tested independently. Well, that's everything there is when you're testing WinForms. I hope this has really lowered the bar and made it a lot easier to test forms for you. Once you start doing it, you can figure out the value for you. For me personally, I find it extremely valuable. A, I really, really care that my program looks right to the user. It's really important to me. And if it goes wrong, it's going to be a very visible bug. Second, one of the big problems in verifying anything is being able to render the data in a way that's easy to see that it's correct. Unfortunately, with GUIs, a lot of thought has already been put into that. Finally, I'd like to close by highlighting Joseph. I met Joseph at Agile 2011. He's one of the contributors to Cucumber and an all-around great guy. We got to know each other during the week there, and in the end, I finally just sat him down and had him port approvals into Cucumber. So if you're interested in doing this on the Ruby stack in Cucumber, you can go see it there. You can find Joseph on Twitter. And as always, if you have any questions, tweet with the hash approval test. I monitor that often and will answer you promptly.